A very good afternoon to all the viewers. Uh, this is Prachi Shrivastav and uh, continuing with the our placement seasons and the strategic management theory, which we are laid down in the placement strategies and hiring patterns. We are especially we are talking about uh, change in technologies. So today, a very special guest among us. Allow me to introduce Mr. Anuj Trivedi, who is director. Uh, strategic sales and solution, technical solutions, Microsoft corporations at Singapore. He will be briefing about a new era of emerging technology where you are talking about intelligence specifically. So thank you, Mr. Anuj, to provide us special time for our students and addressing them about the trending technologies. Thanks, Prachi, and thanks to everybody at the Saga Group of Institutions. Let me first uh, thank the management, the staff, uh, especially Prachi and everybody for taking time out on a Saturday and uh, giving me an opportunity to speak to the fellow students, prospect, and uh, yeah, talk about uh, what's happening in the market, what's the new era in terms of technology. So thanks once again. Before I start, uh, I hope everybody's keeping safe, maintaining social distancing, uh, at the same time keeping in the pink of the spirits. I think that's going to be the new normal. So please, uh, students, wherever you are, from wherever you're logged in, just be mindful of the fact that uh, we should be thankful that uh, we are listening to this conversation and appreciate all the work done by our essential service wherever we are, be it Singapore, be it India, be it Nepal. So the credit goes back to a lot of people. Yes, uh, we are in the midst of challenging and exciting times. These times are driven not just by hashtag COVID-19, but also I would say these times are uh, driven by a lot of fundamental shift which is happening in technology space. Uh, I want to keep this session very interactive. I want to keep this session very collaborative. Uh, I want to keep this session participative. So in case if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, put your comments on private chat. We'll be more than happy to address your queries. I understand it's a Saturday afternoon for most of the people in Bhopal. It's lunchtime. I don't want to bore you. I will keep it very uh, interesting. And that's the reason I wanted to you know, probably start my session today with you know, what's happening in the industry. Uh, and if I can move to the next slide, Prashi, please. Next slide uh, yeah, yeah. You know, is um, quite interesting. Uh, can you, yeah, yeah. Uh, for people, for students, I'm coming back to from where it all started. I mean, if you would appreciate and relate to this painting, it all started back in Madhya Pradesh. For people who don't know, it's basically arts and scriptures and rock scriptures in Veen Betika from where the intelligence, collaboration, and communication started. So it was all, you know, probably where people were talking, chatting, collaborating on the walls. And these are depicted on a US, UNESCO heritage site. I This slide is very close to my heart because, not just because I'm from Bhopal, but also, you know, it's quite close to Bhopal from where I used to go in my childhood days to visit these, uh, uh, you know, paintings, these scriptures, which are embedded. I'm not sure if they're still there, but yeah, I mean, it still brings me a lot of good memories. Uh, Prachi, next slide, or Deepak, next slide, please. So that's from where the trend started. Uh, the trend from slowly moving from scriptures to paintings or people making impressions on the wall. I think the first era came was about newspaper. I think it was targeted, it was intended to reach to mass reach the media. Uh, I appreciate everybody reading newspapers these days on mobile apps, social media. But I think there was a time, and I'm sure everybody will appreciate your parents, your grand, your grandparents, uh, you know, probably your uncles and aunt would still be keen to look at a newspaper every morning. I actually start my day even in Singapore by subscribing to a newspaper because that gives me the ability to look about what's happening in the market. So newspaper really paved the way for mass reach of media. Uh, next slide, you know, probably we will look into what happened after newspapers. So after newspapers, came the biggest era from an audio perspective, which is the radios. The radio made advertising broader. It made it more efficient. Uh, most of the students will not even were born at that time when radio was you know, booming in the eras of 70s or probably 60s and 70s. But I must uh, tell you, that was an era where our parents, our grandparents used to be glued to radio looking, reading about, or probably listening about either news channels or India versus a Pakistan match or a hockey match. I think radio actually made advertising broader, more efficient, and more collaborative. Uh, then we move to the other era, 
uh, which I'm sure most of the students would have seen that era, which is the era of, uh, if we can put the next slide, please. Television. Uh, I, I vividly remember my times. It was Olympiad in India when television was first firmly introduced. Uh, I remember my parents, you know, probably were very excited to bring a black and white TV box into a house. But if you see, that's the shift in which the technology moved from uh, print media to audio media, from audio media to, you know, television. And television actually brought in a lot of advertising to our lives. Uh, you know, the ads about Rasna or Coca-Cola or Sibaka, they are still there in our minds. And I'm sure more and more people in COVID-19 days are glued to TV these days, apart from their work, apart from their studies, be it on offline channels, be it on online channels. So again, television brought in the advertising aspect to our lives. Uh, next slide, Pankaj, please. Uh, from television, we came to an era where we actually started seeing computers. So this was 1980s. 90s when actually we used to have these big computers with the big floppy disks. I still remember those days because uh, I was privileged enough to be born in that era where uh, buying a computer was a fortune. Buying a personal computer was an expensive proposition. It was a time when the floppy disk was the size of a big TV cassette or, or uh, audio cassette. And uh, getting a 16 MB RAM, yes friends, 16 MB RAM was a privilege, it was a luxury for us. Uh, 64 MB to 56 MB was like, you know, this guy can run Windows uh, 95, 98. Uh, my first game which I played was Minesweeper and I still remember uh, what an amazing uh, game which brought in so much life. The other game which uh, probably I still remember was Road Rash. So a lot of students you will not appreciate there was a DOS Road Rash game. You used to go to DOS, you used to open roadrash.exe. And Road Rash brought in that fun element of kicking your friends, kicking your peers, and then, you know, coming to the first. So computers brought that interactivity, that intelligence to human beings about what the life is. Broadband is now, but there was a time there used to be dial-up connections. Connecting to internet was not just easy. You had to wait for a line. Uh, there used to be those abnormal alien sounds which used to come from our modem. Uh, which was, uh, you know, through Satyam, Infi, or through MTNL. So yes, computers brought that interactivity to our lives. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I have a specific message which I wanted to pass in. And I want this to be remembered because it's a Saturday. I don't want to bore you. And that's where, you know, it's the trend which I'm trying to follow from scriptures to newspapers to radio to computers. Next slide, you know, is the 1990s era. Uh, wherein from computers, it we brought in convenience. Well, while this is a, a good looking Microsoft Surface device, but they were, you know, there were these big, fat, heavy laptops which were there in the market, which brought in convenience. So professional students can carry that in their backpacks uh, and go to colleges. Uh, again, you know, those laptops, if I remember, were hardly 512. MB of RAM and maximum 8 GB of size. Think of those times to the time where we are living because currently 8 GB, if you download four movies, you are currently consuming more than 8 GB of your space. So compute laptops brought in that convenience. This was the 1990 to 2000 era. Let's move to the next slide. Well, this was my first phone. Uh, and I am very proud to say this, that this was Nokia 3310, a phone which came in during the start of 1995 mobile phones brought in your personal number with you uh, for again students incoming call was charged it was a privilege to have a phone i got my phone when i uh, completed my first html project with a, a small shop in uh, newmarket in uh, bhopal and basis my html project of a website i saved some money i brought a phone but mobile phones were introduced and when, when i say mobile phones these are not smartphones these are basic phones which had uh, if you remember it had a snake game it you can only call people and you know nokia was ruling that time so it brought in that personal number uh, then from this era we moved to a completely different era our uh, next slide pankaj which is uh, BBM was introduced. 
uh, blackberry messenger brought in collaboration to us it was not just a life it was a service people were buying blackberries people were buying blackberries not because of the phone but because it came with a bbm service telecom providers used to charge let's say 400 rupees to 500 rupees a month just to have bbm service enabled on their phone and the way we were connecting with our colleagues or friends on network was not just by number but by bbm uh, code and bbm brought in that collaboration so if you see friends students uh, my colleagues that era you know that era had moved from what we had seen to the era what probably i started my career was around the bbm as a service it was not a life it was a privilege to have and people used to you know collaborate the one tick into two ticks used to mean that the, the the message has gone to the other provider to the other person because it used to be collaboration over a service over the internet so again messenger brought collaboration into our lives what you see now uh, next slide pankaj if i can come in then came the era of smartphones uh, smartphones brought in the fun element the ability for uh, us ability for people to download a game a smart game and this is you know a, a cool looking android device i remember you used to have uh, uh, one of the first games which i personally played on a smartphone was a temple run it was a game which was played in the true intention of uh, being alive and uh, scoring points and smartphone brought in that element and we have not yet reached uh, the uh, pinnacle of what the transition of this technology had been uh, you know this was 2000 samsung galaxy uh, iphone was introduced uh, nokia was introduced in the smartphone phase so this was that era which brought a lot of fun element to to uh, human beings uh, to a lot of people all the students go back to your home today and ask your parents about the first smartphone they brought in or the first computer and i think they, you will have a good laugh on a saturday and they will remind you of all the exciting trending times they have seen and even for you guys uh, the friends and students so next slide from smartphone era we came to an era where we started finding our missing friends well everybody is on facebook everybody is on insta i am not on any of these channels i'm not on snapchat but there was this social messaging site which was introduced which uh, you know i could just search for my friend and i could uh, you know find that friend on that channel so students if you're if you're seeing this video this is a company called orkut which was later acquired by another company but orkut brought in the collab social collaboration in place this was the social network of that time wherein i could go to somebody's wall and write something i could paste something i could secretly go and find out his friends so from that time to the collaboration time the exodus or probably that trend had quickly moved from you know talking to one person to collaborating between multiple people so or could brought in or i would say social collaboration brought all our missing friends back in our lives so uh, i i orkut was my first social platform where i started and i'm sure if you again talk to your brothers yes. sisters uh if you talk to your cousins they will probably tell you about what orkut made and what orkut brought that excitement or that vibe in their life so this was the early 2000 era so we are moving from uh again that trend that uh, midst of that exciting times to collaboration times and i think next slide is what probably will give you and yes this is year 2020 and we are again writing on walls so right from early 1800s we were writing on walls in beam betica to a time now as we speak are again writing on walls that's a um, that's a technological shift that's a, in we are in midst of that times which probably we have we could have never witnessed instagrams social channels facebook twitter i think these are the normal trends every millennial has on their phones there is this uh, saying that when you wake up you, you wake up with a device in your hand and your life begins you don't talk to your parents you don't talk to your brother sister the first thing you wake up is look into your phone how many likes dislikes how many followers and that's where 
we are going back in time into that era from where it all started so that's a big shift in which you will probably see uh, happening future because technology is an enabler it does not stop you it does not restrict you from thinking beyond your normal era who would have thought uh, uh, friends and students that facebook or instagram would become the new normal brands i would probably say uh, you know social uh, profiles are first launched on instagram then on digit done on tv channels these days and after covid 19 i very well know uh, you know i think all these actors actresses are not promoting their movies on these channels so we are going back to that era but with a lot of technology as a backbone as an enabler in base the next slide is pretty interesting the next slide will bring in so why how, what brought all these things together it was cloud computing which brought us everything on your fingertips your laptop your smartphone your networks in colleges your database in colleges be it sql i would probably say be it uh, uh, Oracle, be it uh, MongoDB, be it open source, all these databases are getting connected onto the cloud. Your phone is becoming a new life uh, because your phone contains more secrets than your friends, your girlfriends or your boyfriend because your phone is basically everything about you as a person. So cloud computing as a concept brought everything together. The true value of cloud computing, friends, is appreciated in COVID-19 days. Before I started this discussion at 3.30 my time, I was talking to Prachi and Prachi said, uh, digital onboarding or digital is becoming the new norm in our college. Uh, be it delivering classes online, be it uh, proctoring, be it doing assessments is all in the cloud. Think about what, what brought that shift. That shift was brought not just by people like me, Prachi, Pankaj, or friends, it's the technology which brought all us together, which is the cloud computing. If there was no cloud, think about COVID-19, you wouldn't have uh, transacted on internet, you wouldn't have gone back to your local lives, you wouldn't have ordered, uh, you know, food using these apps which you have. And I think, let's give that due respect to cloud computing, and I'll come to cloud computing in my subsequent slides where I will talk a lot about what are the some trends or what are some of these new technologies which students like you should be adopting. Uh, Pankaj, next slide, please. Now, let's take a pause and read each sent, read each box. This is one minute in 2019. And I don't have the I have the right statistics, but I'm still waiting for those statistics because these statistics uh, are generally published in October. Every one minute, there are one million people logging on FB. There are 4.5 million videos getting watched. Uh, think about the Instagram post we are doing every minute. My personal best is 700,000 hours of Netflix getting watched every minute. These are not just uh, you know shocking statistics but that these statistics are driving the way we are looking at technology as an enabler technology as our backbone to what we are doing think about the you know the instagram scrolls you are doing or the people on twitter or uh, you know the snapchat shooting i mean you know and that's basically every minute some data is created on internet and this data is not in the magnitude of gigabytes it is actually terabytes more than that so that's and we are not stopping there this is going to be the new trend after covid 19 where most of the uh, offices are you know requesting their employees to work from home uh, people would want to do more of as, as get away from work netflix of the world you know you uh, they would want to spend online uh, who would have imagined that you would have Facilities like Zomato, Ondoor, in Bhopal, where you can just, you know, uh, buy groceries online and get it delivered. That's all because of the trends or the shift in which the technology is moving. I think this slide is most mostly appreciated by people who are watching me, listening to me, because they, I'm sure, everybody, 
every student will be on at least five or six of these social channels for sure. And they will appreciate the value of what cloud or probably what data is bringing in. Uh, next slide, uh, Apankaj, please. With these times, even the businesses are evolving. When I say businesses, the corporates, the establishments, uh, and you know more and more companies these days. I'm sure you're reading newspapers, Times of India, Straight Times, Hindu, Economic Times. Most of these companies are now asking people to you know work from home forever, or actually have more and more of remote workers, and that's going to be the new norm. More and more companies are focusing on mobile uh, development as their preferred uh, shift because they feel that if people will not come to work and they will not access internal application, it's best that you give them the mobile which they have. What is also interesting, a consumer use an average of four devices per day. It could be smartphone, it could be laptop, it could be a tablet, it could be some other device. But that's the way the new norm is moving. Most importantly, because of COVID, most of our you know, friends in the contact center industry are not going to work because they are managing it online. And the era of social, you are expecting that your response should be addressed in less than one hour. Think about the time when you had to call up a call center. Uh, these days, very hard, very rarely you will find somebody. But if you go on social and you vent your anger, you complained about something, you, your chances of getting a response is higher on social media than traditional channels by calling somebody in a contact center. More importantly, you know, the businesses what we are seeing has to be social, has to be mobile. It has to be on the cloud. And which brings me to the next slide, which I believe would be very interesting to talk. So with here, with these trends, with what we have seen comes new opportunities. And these opportunities, if I see, are not something which you learn every day as part of your daily lives. No, uh, there is a there is a maximum of what you can learn in colleges and schools because of the way our structure is. But having said that, these opportunities revolve around the new technologies, which is cloud computing, be it you know, a private cloud, uh, public cloud, software as a service, use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, which is, ability for a system to learn from you and give you more insights about how are you as a person. Big data. You saw my slides about how much data is getting consumed, how much of uh, information. Big data is a new norm wherein, you know, a lot of corporates, a lot of companies are now looking at scientists, big data scientists. NLP is becoming something very important these days. Uh, for people who have a smartphone, NLP is best addressed on your smartphone itself, where your photo becomes your uh, password of opening up your phone or your phone. So I don't have to type. The moment I look into my phone, uh, my phone op opens up. How is it possible? That is a combination of, uh, you know, I would probably say uh, face detection, which is again powered by a lot of NLP bots. Think about the last time when you ordered food through, let's say Zomato or Deliveroo or Swiggy. And when you had to talk to somebody, there are bots now available which can talk to you, which can take your first address, which can address your first burning needs rather than calling up a call center. And my preferred is one is bots because we are doing, we are seeing a lot of work happening in bots. Uh, a good example would be go to any of the e-commerce website you will see that rather than you calling up their call center, they will have a bot presence on their website where a bot will open up a pop-up saying, hey, I'm, I want to talk to you, how can I help you? Those are the new ways in which the companies are wanting to talk to you. And bots as a framework, again, is a new opportunity for a lot of students to tap into. Uh, smart devices and smart devices, are, 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 again, a very good example of how I start my day. I, st I start my day at 5.45 in the morning. And the first thing I do is I go for a run. My, my phone tells me how much I have ran, how much calories I've burned, how much water I should be taking, what has been my heart rate. It also tells me that, you know, I am consuming more water than I should be doing. 
where are these statistics going? Again, the IoT, the Internet of Things and smart devices is again becoming a new normal in the new era of cloud computing. Cybersecurity, uh, with more and more people now working from home, with more and more people logging into their devices, there are the chances of hacks, trojans. Again, cybersecurity is now a new era. I mean, it's a new norm these days where I would say you would, you know, you, you, you can be a hacker, a professional hacker. And these hackers are now getting hired by most of the large MNCs to look into their social, to look into their IT strategy to say, you know, how prone are we to getting hacked by, uh, you know, a third party. Blockchain, uh, again, this is collaborating, uh, you know, with different technologies, transacting virtual currencies. Uh, I don't want to talk about virtual currencies, but again, yeah, there are there was a time when people were just transacting through virtual currencies. And that again would be something to look into. UI front end experience. These days, we see a lot and lot of corporates, uh, you know, companies are focusing on their UI experience rather than the back end. Because the UI experience is what matters to the millennials. It's not, uh, you know, what happens at the back. Uh, there was a time, if you remember, there were two e-commerce companies who had completely stopped their presence on websites. They were only on mobile apps. First company was Mintra. Second company was Jabong. And they said, and make my trip, they said, very soon we will get out of websites. We will have only mobile apps where people can transact. So UI, front end, again, there's a lot of, uh, you know, priority. There's a lot of focus given to those aspects. Uh, and there are many more like that. Uh, today is not the day, but as I said, I will be more than keen to come back again and talk about these specific topics at a future time, at a convenient time. I just wanted to give you highlights of you know these trends, these particular sectors where we are seeing a lot of focus. And there are many more as well. Uh, Pankaj, if I can go to the next slide. And I was exactly in midst of what you guys are in. I'm not saying that uh, you know, everybody goes through a perfect journey. This is exactly the mind of not just an engineering graduate, any graduate of what learning, what mot what drives my motivation, what skills should I have, where should I be working, what achievements I would be doing, should I look at expectations, should I look at competition, should I look at CTC or my salary, I'm worried about when is my offer coming because the company extended my offer by two months, three months? Should I worry about, uh, you know, okay, I want to go and work in Delhi. I don't want to go to Bangalore because it's too far. This is exactly, there's a lot of anxiety which goes into the mind of an engineering graduate. You are not new. Everybody goes through that phase. I went through the same phase as well. It is just about prioritizing. It is just about, you know, probably, uh, you know, giving that perspective. And I think the next slide is where I would talk a lot about what I would want to talk about. So here it is. Now, this slide is probably where I would be focusing a lot. And my advice to fellow students, my advice to students about what they should be doing. Uh, and, you know, I've kept at a high level 16, 17 boxes. Some of them are highlighted in black. Some of them are in white. It's not that, you know, the white ones are to be ignored, but the black ones is where I would see a lot of focus needs to be given rather than the white ones. White ones are also important. But if we start looking into these boxes one by one, you will probably appreciate and you will go back and start a new normal. Let's start one by one. First of all, your life is not just about Java and .NET trends. It's your life does not end there. There are many technologies which are there in the available market now. There is CGI, there is Python, there is Azure, there is Amazon, there is Google Big Data. There is so much which you can do. So life is not just about Java and .NET. That's number one. Number two, skills you need to identify the skills which will be needed by you to succeed. Not everybody is would be good in coding. Let me tell you, I was never good in coding. I'm still not good in coding. But I knew 
after my graduation that coding is not something i would want to do because i struggled every day writing a hello world code uh, in my college it was challenge i started coding on pascal cobol uh, c++ for people who have joined on this call they would appreciate yashwant kanitkar which was again the c++ and java books which were written by a great author i'm not saying coding is bad but in case if you don't like it take a call your life does not stop if you don't appreciate coding or if you don't like it there are many streams in uh, in engineering there are many streams in computer science or mechanical wherein you could be succeeding where you could probably do a good job so coding is not the end of your career no number 2 and this is my again i my my personality as such as a person was i was shy in asking questions not because i felt that the question was wrong but i would feel that you know you know i would you know there would be people who would laugh at me frankly there is no such thing as a stupid question we what are getting the questions from the student side but you know hats off to you you are diving into their minds and you are about to tell each and everything so whatever question are being arises it, you have already covered that okay yeah so, let, so if sure. there is something new i will raise it to you sure uh so you know there is nothing like a stupid question uh please ask these questions socializing is as important as studying when i say socializing i'm not asking you to go to the bars and pubs at 1 am in the morning and having a good time but yes do socialize with friends do socialize with people in in your career when you are in your mid 20s 30s one of the biggest hindrances what companies will will see in you is that you're not a social person you tend to shy away from uh you know talking in peers talking in group so socializing helps you build your personal uh relationships your personality more importantly start networking there is no right or wrong time for networking if um, and this is my biggest advice today if you're not on linkedin please take 30 minutes today go to linkedin and create or linkedin profile nobody looks at your resume personally i interview so many people i have a team of people i would hardly look into resumes the first thing i do is i look into the social profile i go to linkedin see who this person is his experiences his recommendations you know how many followers he has how many connections he has done so start networking today if not if you are doing it good job start putting a lot of projects your internships into your linkedin profile because your linkedin profile not now Five years from now will probably be, be your biggest asset, which you will carry with you, which your five-page Word doc will not carry, but your LinkedIn will carry. Uh, have fun. A uh, lot of people end up working hard. A lot of people end up mugging. That's not the idea. Have fun while studying. And when you say fun, make it collaborative. Make it participative. Uh, make it a more relaxed environment. my company uh, where i work uh, i am not supposed to go in trousers and shirts i don't even have an office a table and a chair i take my presentations on a bean bag uh, it, you might think these are funny things but yeah, that's the reality you know most of the companies which uh, i have worked or the companies where my friends are working you know the culture is so cool that you can go in shorts and t-shirts with your t-shirt with your cap on they don't care as long as you're working you're contributing towards so have that fun because that form element is something which you will bring into your daily lives a uh, certification uh, would probably be yes uh, you know start looking into these certifications what kind of certifications can help you and uh, you know i am i can more i'm more than happy to connect with you on an offline basis on linkedin uh, you know about these certifications in dot net hadoop big query uh you know private cloud you know stuff like that the other bold one is anxiety management i faced a lot trust me trust you when i was a student uh and the anxiety was practicals why was more importantly the anxiety was around um, the you know the placement interviews um, you know i would stress i would shiver uh do focus on that aspect uh if even if you're getting an internship paid and paid take it seriously it will definitely add some value to your resume 
to your lives because that internship will open up that uh, you know pillar of experience in the corporate culture which suddenly you are you know thrown into you might you know probably just be a little reluctant uh use internet for advantage uh, i can tell you in my time internet was a luxury uh, i never had internet at home let me be very honest and be very brutally honest i used to go to cyber cafes to you know probably look for assignments i remember it was 45 rupees for 30 minutes to go to an internet cafe and uh, surf i can also be honest in telling my first internet uh, site was yahoo chat so we used to have these chat where we used to talk to friends we used to collaborate but please use internet to advantage because what you have is uh, you know information at your fingertips search 30 minutes every day before you go to sleep search for an emerging technology search how will that technology is impacting you on your lives and if that technology or that domain interests you then start creating presentations who says again you know as i said that after engineering the only thing you will do is software developer no only 10% of in you know people who graduate go to it companies will do coding some of them will be expected to create presentations some of them would be expected to work with offshore clients on site clients create presentations please uh, you know uh, if you are perfect good job if you are getting there practice hard software developer is not the only job and my my friends and students yes uh, yaar mujhe software developer hona hai mujhe coding hai yeah, ya the only job i'll get is uh, you know with a big uh, si or a big bangalore based company hyderabad based company where i will be doing coding no there are many things you could be a big data scientist you could be a security analyst you could be a hadoop developer you could be a azure consultant you could be a sharepoint consultant uh, you could be a crm consultant so and these things i'm talking about has nothing to do with coding it is just about different aspects uh, develop and practice communication skills um yes again this i've put it in black box is because in your career there you would have an aspiration to go on site everybody has that aspiration not now let's in four years from now and when you're facing a client interview i guess communication skills is the only thing which on site customers or on site people will look into you they don't care what technology you have they don't care what is in your resume because agar tum wahan tak gaye ho अगर तुम उस कंपनी में हो विच मीन्स कंपनी ने कुछ सोच के ही तुम्हें हायर किया होगा बट वॉट दे लुक फॉर यू इज नॉट योर टेन पेज रेज्यूमर इज योर इंट्रोडक्शन योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज योर कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स सो डू प्रैक्टिस इफ यू आर गुड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी गॉड ब्लेस यू इफ यू आर स्टिल देयर ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ लर्निंग प्लीज 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 यू नो जस्ट यू नो गो ऑन दिस एंड आई थिंक विद द एडवेंट ऑफ नेटफ्लिक्स विद द एडवेंट ऑफ सो मेनी कॉमेडी चैनल्स यू विल अप्रिशिएट how this communication skills becomes a new norm uh investigate emerging technologies what are these new technologies which are coming in now i mean considering i'm in microsoft the next best thing which we are now talking about is big data which is you know uh, coming from a lot of different sources there's so much data that companies often struggle to create one customer view and that is the new norm which is uh you know let's say prachi is on facebook prachi is on social channel prachi is on many channels how do i create one view of prachi as a customer and that is where the customer big data or data scientists are the new norm which i have started seeing uh create your 30 60 90 career plan i'm not saying that you should do it but start thinking on those lines in my next slide which i will talk about it later i have that plan for you where in you know you can talk and start thinking about how should you create your 30 60 90 uh you can you should join forums and communities i think linkedin is a very good platform where you can buy your membership go into these channels uh, you can subscribe to a blog you can subscribe to a community you can subscribe to internships in bhopal or in some other places and my biggest my best a learning uh, is is an orange box which i take it to my heart because this is what microsoft taught me fail fast but learn faster
it is good if you if you're failing yaar fail hona is not a big deal i fail i fail every day but i learn from everything because the way technology is moving there is no perfect a way in which you can you know adopt these trends failing is taken so positively in probably from where i come in microsoft i don't hire people based on their resumes i don't hire on their academics i hire people who are risk takers who have failed who have tried something and and were not able to succeed but the most important thing is learning from that failure and learning fast because even losing can help you win you might sound anuj kya baat kar raha hai but yes uh, trust me no wait, the I biggest high five for this <laughs> uh, trust me uh, in microsoft uh, when i interview the first thing i look for in is we ask candidates have you failed and if yes tell me the four or five areas where you failed and what did you do why you failed and how did you learn from it the biggest motivation or the biggest boost for me would be that people accept that they have failed and then they learn from that failure hardly you know you will see somebody saying no i'm perfect nobody is perfect i am not perfect neither prachi neither pankaj nobody but what is important is that we learn we learn faster uh, there was a project i'm currently doing for the bank in japan and uh, the, the 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 bank in japan asked us to create a uh, facial recognition atm withdrawal project wherein so very soon you will probably see and i'm sure in india that has happened you don't need atm card to withdraw money you just need retina scan you would just need your thumbprint your thumbprint becomes your id your retina scan becomes your password and just with your thumb and retina scan you will be able to withdraw money so we failed i failed because i was not able to understand the machine learning and ai aspect of and you know why i failed because the logic i was applying the facial recognition patterns i was applying was mostly targeted towards indian uh, faces but in japan you would have probably different kind of faces or in asian country the faces recognition patterns are so different that my machine learning pattern failed it couldn't recognize retina forget retina it couldn't recognize faces and from there we learned and we failed i mean we literally you know blew two months of time we failed but we learn from that failure is that in asian countries the best norm is that you should apply uh, different techniques the second thing uh, you know where where i would probably say i failed is another project of mine so in singapore we are doing a big project for uh, immigration so when you go to when you pass immigration you would have an immigration officer so what we are currently doing is we are doing a retina scan based on a lot of different things and uh, yeah you don't need not you no longer need passports you would just use your thumb prints and uh, to exit out of that country so yes uh, peace if you are not failing you are doing wrong things you should fail but what you should do is more importantly learn from those failures because it's important uh yeah uh, with that uh, next slide is probably my 30 60 90 day plan this is just a rough chart which i created the rough chart is basically you know what you should do is the what you should do is my kids are here can you go uh what you should do is you know you should put your name you should put what do i need to know then what do i need to do and with whom i connect so this is my 30 60 90 the first 30 days let's say i put knowledge so for the first 30 days knowledge what do i need to know put four or five bullet points it could be cloud it could be big data it could be you know machine learning then what do i need to do to need to know that and then with whom should i connect this is my plan i'm not saying you should follow that plan you can create a similar plan but generally this is what i recommend students you know because it's an open paper take a print out take a pencil or pen on a good sunday morning after your chai coffee nashta put your thoughts then certification what do i need to note for this certification what do i need to do and with whom i must connect and similarly for internships for your jobs you can change these parameters knowledge certification internships on the top and you can put apply any other certification any other methods but this is just something i thought 
uh, I can create a 30, 60, 90. Even after 90 days, you're not able to complete. That's absolutely fine. But there has to be a start, which I would recommend. I've been talking for 45 minutes. So let me just give me one minute. I'll be more than happy to take any questions. Just give me one minute. So you people are listening uh, towards all these uh, skill sets. Yeah. And it's a very, you know, uh, basic pattern which we need to follow every day. And, you know, uh, without any, um, you know, this is not a particular strategy we are making, but a normal plan we can focus on. We are providing a systematic, uh, you know, scheduler for each and every uh, activity. And yes, to proceed ahead with that is the new normal, we can say. I yeah, have I seen mean, you and we were saying each and every point and you were taking notes of that. Uh, I feel, you know, uh, it was so important for you, like whatever points we are taking up, you have to create a particular notepad and you are noting each and every bit of point we need to discuss. So, but incredible practice. No, this. It is important. I mean, and again, I will go back to the last slide. Pankaj, you can go back to the last slide. My biggest learning for or my biggest takeaway for students, everybody is the orange box. Fail fast, guys. Uh, you know, it is important to fail, but it's more important to learn from failure. Take risks uh, because risk takers are somebody who would I would hire. I would not hire who has good academic credentials. Yes, obviously, they, that will probably set the parameter. But if I had to choose between a A++ graduate versus somebody who's uh, you know, thinking of weird thoughts, thinking of some risk taking new projects, I would probably hire somebody with a risk taking ability. So with that, uh, you know, I will give you my, uh, you know, my email address. I think that's already there on the first page. More than happy to connect with uh, friends, happy to give you some suggestions in case if you want to. Uh, don't think of it that, you know, uh, I have lost first three years doing this no in hindi kehte hain jab jago tab savera start thinking on the new technology and if given an opportunity would love to come back again and talk to you again on any particular domain or any particular technology trend on which you would need to talk about more let's say cloud computing so what is this cloud computing you know you have private cloud public cloud you have uh, sas pass iaas so I suggest you start with me. I can come back again, talk to you about these aspects because that's what's going to drive the next, uh, you know, inside your heart, the future in you. And the future lies in your hand. It doesn't lie with the college or with me talking. It's how you perceive yourself. So with that, Prachi, let me conclude the session. In case there are questions, happy. If not, you know, take it off. Uh, we have received uh, 15 to 20 questions, but I guess uh, you have already answered that. You know, people are uh, most curious about to know about the, you know, future skill sets. Post-COVID would be, you know, any opportunities in the IT. Uh, if we are on internship, what all technologies we need to learn. So all these questions we have already answered. And still we can request yeah. all the uh, you know, viewers that if they have any question in their mind, they can just uh, drop in the chat box and I will mail you to Anuj. So probably we can uh, follow this process and we'll get back to them as well. Sure. No problem. I, as, as I said, in case if you have a question, you can reach out to me directly. But there are some few questions I'm seeing. Windows Core IoT, Ashish Tabade is asking. Yes, there are many, you know, possible to interface IoT directly with Microsoft Cloud. Of course, Azure Cloud is actually well suited. So, Ashish, I really like your question. You know, uh, the Azure Cloud gives you that flexibility. But I, I guess I, I, it will be hard for me to address each and every question, Prachi. Maybe you can give me all the questions in a notepad I can address and give it back to you. Sure, sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. And uh, before that, I just wanted to, uh, you know, address all these students that uh, whatever you have uh, taken in your content, you know, problem is the orthodoxy and the solution is the new normal. So what all measures you have, you know, elaborated for us, uh, they are very useful for all these students. And of course, they will get benefit for this, for the same. And uh, it is really hard and tough to talk about a particular product company and to tell what all projects they are handling and what all technologies they are coming to. Very beautifully, you have elaborated the each and every specific area where people are, you know, looking forward. And of course, it is the need of the art that we should also change our mindsets and, you know, 
go for the new technology and uh, accept this normal then only you will be uh, facing something and the hats of this particular tag and really liking it that fail fast and learn faster so but it was a very very beautiful brief we have you know uh, get from your side uh, thank you so much for uh, joining thanks, this platform Prachi. thanks prachi thanks pankaj thanks, thanks to all the students thank for coming on our saturday thank you so much sir and we are also looking forward that uh, whenever we have uh, something new to ask you uh, related to uh, new trends and everything uh, we will call you again uh, no problem we'll be happy to come here experience. yeah thank you thank you, thank you, so thank you for the Bye. viewers uh, please drop all the messages in the chat box i will uh, you know uh, note it down on our ikta and i'll share with the anand thank you anand for joining us Bye. once again thank you viewers for watching us.